Hello Tubesters, it's me Gav and welcome to another one of my videos and welcome to Sunshine Indoors. <laughs> I keep going on about it, the amount of lights our little electricity meter is going round like an Olympic runner. Right, um, this is, as you can tell by the uh, title, is the first instalment on my vlog on my Sario build. Uh, I'm, there's progress and there's not. Uh, for once in my life I seem to be being able to put a kit together that isn't, um, you know, fighting me all the way. I'm not reading the instructions wrong. And when I was saying that, I look at it and, and probably uh, I haven't got that much done to, to actually be that problematical. But what I'd set myself a task on this one. This is, uh, if you see the unboxing, I'll go into it, only not in depth, uh, go on Wikipedia or somewhere to, to look at the proper info. But these are Sario tanks. There was only other two ever made. Uh, and uh, that they they went in for a competition uh, in Saudi Arabia, you know, for the Saudis to pick a new main battle tank. Uh, uh, they didn't win, and um, there was no money left to, to push the project any further forward. It wasn't a government-backed project by the Brazilian government. It was just um, a private venture. So they, uh, in the end, I think the company ended up going uh, ceased to exist, and uh, the tanks were donated or to the. I believe the Brazilian army, um, but they're still, I, I, I don't believe they were obviously actually used as part of a unit, being there's only two of them, and I don't suppose they had a lot of backup really, uh, you know, obviously only being two being made for spares and things. Uh, sorry, I keep looking down at the kit as I'm talking. Uh, so, as a prototype, I wanted to learn myself a couple of things. Uh, I've been recently subscribed to the Night Shift channel, and uh, Martin over there has has been starting to show like different techniques. He he's obviously he's a top class modeler or whatever. I believe you know he must win show competitions and things like that. And uh, he's been recently putting up videos showing the how to make armor texture and how to do uh, weld seams, weld beads, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I've I really wanted to have a go at that. Um, practice on this one and it'll still be practice let's face it for a few more vehicles down the road really but uh, because what I have found and we'll see in a minute my, my, I just started doing the weld seams last night on, on mine and they are bulgy out and they are bigger than they should be uh, some are slightly better than others um, but uh, yeah they're, they're not as good as I'd hope them to be but it's the first try so first time last night so I'm not going to beat myself up I'll speed myself up over that it's just a case of it'll be what it'll be and uh, you know we'll just move on um, when I do the Tyron uh, T55 tank uh, which is why I wanted to start with this one just to get an idea if I was going to do any on that tank um, I was actually having a look at that one last night I did a, an unboxing just just to myself <laughs> just to see what the what if they've got any flame cuts and things like that on them uh, on it uh, but we'll go into that on obviously on an unboxing when this one's complete but uh, yeah, join me at the bench, guys, and I'll go over the, the armour texture I've done. It looks nothing like Martin's. <laughs> it's a gaff kit. Uh, and obviously the, the the starting of the welding that I'm doing around it. Um, and uh, also the barrel. I've almost got a seamless barrel. It's taken four nights of applying sprue glue and then, you know, the next night uh, sanding it down. But we're almost there. So join me at the bench, guys, and you'll have a, a look at what I've actually got complete on the Asario. Right, guys, thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, this is our Asario. Let's bring these lights in even a bit more. I think that might work. Right, um, the I've only textured the... In fact, let's take away the turret for the moment. This is the texture I've put on the... On the hull, I have sanded it down. Now the lights are probably too bright now, and it's not showing it. Now Martin, uh, or night shift, whatever you want to call him, he he, he uh, all his is covered over. Now he uses Tamiya putty. He said he has used. This is uh, Mr. Surfacer 500. Uh, go and check out Night Shift channel, uh, and you know what he can obviously tell you. He's a professional, and he can tell you exactly uh, the do's and don'ts. But um, he reckons that the Mr. Surfacer, if you're using debonder on super glue that you might be attaching, you know, fret, uh, PE fret to and things like that, it'll often uh, uh, wipe this stuff out and 
my problem is in the UK we can't get, um, as far as I know, the grey Mr Tamiya Basic putty because he mixes that with uh, Mr Colour Glue, uh, which is more or less like the uh, um, Tamiya Extra Thin, and he'll put it on in different layers and sand it down and that. I've tried to attempt to do the same with the uh, Mr Surfacer. I don't have the, the Tamiya, and it's, again, it's make, do and mend. A lot of people use a surfacer, so I've you know I've got it handy. I might as well use it. It's a lot rougher here because I've tried to do the um, non-slip texture. Uh, I'll have to cut that out very slightly. The one thing on this kit, the hatches and things don't don't fit particularly well, uh, as in that they're a bit loose. Now, when I looked at the kit, I thought that this raised bit here, if you can see it, um, goes down like a bit of a ski slope. From the from the rear to the uh, to the turret area. Well, that's actually when you look at the walk around, the tanks actually have that in real life. Uh, must be a devil if you put a screwdriver down because it will run from one end of the deck to the other. But uh, yeah, it um, it has that in real life, so I'm quite happy about that. I've got that gap there, but that's going to be um, plugged with uh, weld seam anyway, so I was happy to leave that. It was a bit of a pain to get through. It's got the, the usual like rubber grommets that you press down into. Um, and again here, that's going to have the same, so that, that's been left, left like it. I've tried to do, if you can see there, what looks... I've tried to do some flame cut marks there. When they've cut through the steel. And I've also done it... If you can see, I've, I've done the flame cut marks on here as well. I couldn't see any, see any on this this rear one, uh, and obviously it's, it wouldn't be shown anyway because it's it's butting up to it, and the turret comes right over here anyway. Obviously these little bits of things out here I've got to clean out yet before I do uh, any priming. I'm leaving these out. This is the one thing I wish I'd done. Uh, I wish I'd have cut these off now, and these are made up of several layers of filter uh, with a big cap on the top. Um, they come very simplified with with just the top cap, uh, some some bars that weld onto the side, or if not weld on, but they they, they go bracing things that go onto the side. Uh, I've put some little uh, bits of metal over because on some of the pictures they actually have. Uh, I suppose it's for lifting these filters up, putting some shackles on. They have some little lifting um, handle type things on them. But yeah, these would normally be like, uh, I don't know how many, we'll say half a dozen uh, of these, uh, like almost like filter sheets and then the one on the top. And I wish I'd done that, but I didn't want to try and start hacking this out and then try and build up uh, when I've already, I'd already done all the back area. There's lots of other bits you can scratch build onto this, but that wasn't, I didn't want to overcomplicate stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I know the guy who stuck a load of texture down and is doing weld beads, but that was the... That was the thing I was trying to teach myself uh, for this this like lesson on this kit, if that makes sense. So I didn't want to go overboard. I put a couple of little metal um, grab handly type things on to pick up the uh, the stowage bins. Uh, and the I'm not putting the perspex in these. I'm doing that what I did before. Got the mirror that mirror stuff because it literally. Uh, it's hard enough to stick straight over those gaps and um, you don't need any backing to it. I uh, stuck these on afterwards. Uh, there wasn't any point in keeping them off. I uh, leveled them up, put, over, put a, a metal rule across just to try and keep them. They, they don't move much anyway, but just to put a level, get them level. Uh, I don't, there's no point putting like the, I don't know if they're swing arms, or, but the, the arms for the wheels, there's no point putting those on at the moment because it'll just complicate things. Um, and then they will have on the sides, they which they ask you to put on at this stage, as um, to go down obviously the armoured sides. But again, that would stop me getting into all the areas. So I'm going to leave those off and treat those as a separate, uh, separate uh, bit of the build. So yeah, that's our that's our hull. Um, our turret. Again, you can see where I've. Um, Taking uh, what do they call it? <laughs> seam, seam line, groove maker. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, when you've got head problems, it goes out, it, it, things don't stick. But you know what I'm talking seam, seam line maker, whatever they call it. Um, so I've gone digging into that because that's a one piece uh, turret. 
and I've gone digging into that and I will te put, be texturing on this as well but this is where the this bit here is where the um, turret basket for stowing the camo nets and stuff and goes and you can see I've gone down there um, not sure if that's right or wrong but by the time I put my overly large weld seams on uh, you won't see that I've gone down the side there as well I'll be putting weld seam around this now uh, you can see gaps between the different vision ports or blocks you, you, you can actually see so it's not a particularly great bit to fit that um, so I might try and stick some see see underneath it just it's not it's not what I'd call precision put together and that's not by me that's just how it all you couldn't make you couldn't make it fit any better well you guys that can model better probably could but what I'm saying is it's it's, it's fitted perfectly into its positioning and that's just the fit of it um, again this is going to have to be sanded I reckon because that sits all proud and again you have these gaps uh, there isn't any wig wiggle room to, to get that any better so yeah that's the bits that, that aren't particularly good on it uh, this square doesn't look as if it's when I look on the walk around it doesn't look if it's actually I don't know how it's fixed in but it's not doesn't seem to be welded in or anything uh, this is actually a, a bit of flexible material of some description uh, and it moves when the mantlet moves I can't put the mantlet on the gun on yet because I'm I'm obviously just working on the the gun barrel itself. So yeah, that's our turret. But uh, they're the welds. I'm gonna have to go around and clean a few up a bit. I don't think I can really sand the. I have to watch his video again just to see if he. I think if I sand them down, I'm just going to sand all the texture off them. But uh, I did try and cut them flatter once it was in. Now again. Uh, Night Shift uses uh, the Tamiya Epoxy Putty. I didn't have any of that. Um, and he said he used to use the Magic Sculpt. Or, and they weren't, this is what this is. And I've, I've got loads of that. So I thought, well, you know, I'll go for that. I've got it. So there we go. That's what we've got done. Um, oh, and the barrel. Really chuffed with the barrel. I don't need that at the moment. There's a very slight, but when you, I mean, it's had lots of scuba, scoo, sprue glue, <laughs> oh, good. sprue goo. Uh, it's had lots of sprue, sprue goo applications and sanding. So you've got that bit there, but there's no actual, when you rub your fingernails of it, there's no, there doesn't seem to be a, uh, a ridge or anything. So I'm hoping on what I'm seeing is just what's through the glue, but um, I stuck the, the, the like fume, vent type thing together uh, last night with the rest of the barrel so that just does need a bit of sprue, sprue goo in that just to get that a bit more closed up I think but uh, I've got this is the 120 millimeter gun uh, and I thought well if I really make this flat with over sanding or something I've got the what they do the 105 in the in the pack as well so um, I'd always got the 105 mil to stick on or to attempt to obviously you'd have to stick it back together again and do all the rest of it but uh, no, I'm dead chuffed with that. There's bits where you can't see a seam at all, and there's bits where there's a. It looks a very slight seam. So, you know, have that under primer in the next few days and uh, and see what it looks like. Now, in my luck, it'll just expose a giant seam line down the side. But I'm uh, quite chuffed with that. As I say, you can see it there, but I can't. I can't feel at all any. Oh, he says that, and there's a tiny bit there. Oh well, I'm. <laughs> Might have to have another sand and uh, and fill at that, but it's taken like three or four nights to to do it. But uh, you know it's not too bad. So guys, that's what we've got done. I've also got obviously lots of wheels cleaned and and they're all in a little box waiting to waiting to be primed, and some some other bits and sundries and that waiting to be primed as well. Uh, what I'll do is uh, when I've I've put the turret together and textured it, I'll cut all the other bits and pieces off the sprues and um, because I'm going to put the texture on and then put the put the uh, the stowage bins oh and the stowage bins as well I won't get them out uh, but on the walk around and on the even on the photograph on the photograph on the box art which isn't particularly great but it does show the lids to the stowage bins and yet the actual stowage bins themselves in the kit are just literally 
smooth smooth square bins you know there doesn't seem to be any attempt to have even put a put a lid on those now unless they've actually got a separate thing that sticks on top and I've not seen it uh, I might well try and do a bit of plastic card on those because they just look you know they don't you know they don't look like stowage bins you'd think it was something that was you know externally onto the side of the tank that that came through onto the inside or something you know so yeah, that's it guys. Uh, that's the uh, first part of the Osario uh, build series done. As I say, I'm really chuffed with how it's gone uh, together. It's uh, Nothing's been massively problematical. Uh, some of these uh, stowage bin clasps, you have to just cut these, uh, the hook part, just thin them very slightly with a scalpel. Um, or a sanding stick, whatever you want, uh, just to get them to fit into the into clip on, because uh, they're a bit they're a bit oversized, and the kit does have uh, a fair bit of flash to it. Uh, and when I say uh, not not hugely, it doesn't shout out to you. It's it's when you're actually starting to work on them, and you suddenly see this little bit at the end is has got a tiny bit of flash on. So nothing nothing massive, you know. It's it's all it's all just off with a sanding stick in two seconds, but. Uh, the, it is a bit flashy, and when I was looking at the T55 kit, uh, the Tyron kit last night, that's got the same the same type of issues. Uh, but again, two seconds with a sanding stick and they're gone. So thank you very much, guys, for stopping by and taking a look. I hope all goes well with you. Uh, I've got a the Napoleonic commission that I'm painting at the moment, the 28 mils. I've got a bit more of those to show in a video probably tomorrow or Tuesday. And then uh, we'll roll on the rest of the week, seeing whatever pops into my head at the time. <laughs> so guys, take care of yourselves again, and I do thank you for stopping by, and we'll catch each other very soon on another video. Cheers.